What is up everybody? It's the new bear, the ginger runner here for another gingerrunner.com review. Today, a fun one. New shoes from a brand I've never reviewed before, but a review due to popular demand. Many people reach out asking me to review shoes from this manufacturer. The manufacturer themselves reached out and was like, hey, we'd love to send you a couple pairs to review. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give them a shot. Today we are reviewing two shoes, both from On, yes, that's the name of the manufacturer, the Cloud Surfer and the Cloud Flyer. Clash of the Cloud. Now as runners, we grasp onto gear and ideas in hopes that certain pieces can make us faster or more efficient runners. That's just part of the way our mind works and I'm guilty as charged. And as brands, their job is to market new ideas, new innovations to us. Brands like Hoka market their extra cushioning. Newton have their lugs. New Balance has fresh foam. Adidas has boost. And On has clouds. These little pods underneath the shoe that are full of, well, their gaps. These pods or clouds are meant to absorb energy and transfer it to forward motion. I was absolutely 100% skeptical for a long time whether or not this technology actually worked, if it was just marketing BS, their website's really nice and polished and make it look really cool. But I knew I had to try the shoes for myself to see if the stuff works, if it's worth it. So I got a chance to try both of these shoes, compare them to each other, and it's time to report back. Both the Cloud Surfer and the Cloud Flyer are fairly similar shoes. They're responsive, slightly overweight, surprising surprisingly nimble and closer to unpotted shoes than I expected, but they really are so similar in their responsiveness that I opted to group both of them into the same review. I do have my preference for one of these over the other, but because the technology is so similar in both of them, you're not getting vastly different running experiences, though I know some of you are going to argue that, and that's what the comments are for. I mean, one shoe utilizes zero gravity foam for their pods, the other uses outsole rubber, but other than that, you're getting a higher drop responsive ride out of both of these shoes meant for people with really efficient strides. So let's just get on with things I like and dislike about On Running's Cloud Surfer and Cloud Flyer. Studying with things that I like. Innovation. I like that a brand is trying to do something different. They're stepping outside of the normal running shoe box and creating something new and innovative. And to be totally honest, they're more successful here than I anticipated. In my mind, I was thinking I was gonna feel these pods, that they were gonna be super annoying, that it wasn't gonna transfer very well to my running form. But really, after a while of running in both pairs of shoes, you don't really notice the pods. They begin to feel like any normal responsive running shoe, specifically with technology meant for speed and efficiency in mind. So yay for innovation. The uppers. Both uppers are quite different. On the Cloud Surfer, it's quite a bit thinner. You get a bit thicker, but still breathable upper on the Cloud Flyer. But overall, both are stable, both are comfortable, far more than I anticipated, and surprisingly breathable, especially in the Southern California heat wave that we have going on right now. You think it's winter, you think it's spring, feels like summer. Responsiveness. Both of these shoes are far more responsive than you would expect. Some of them even advertise more cushioning or more stability, but overall they're just more responsive rides. Even the strobel board inside of each shoe is a hard plastic benefited by the sock liner being extra cushioned and the varying clouds underneath. But because of these more responsive materials, these shoes definitely benefit those looking to go fast with a more efficient stride. And I really like that responsiveness. And finally, flexibility primarily in the Cloud Flyer. Despite the more responsive materials, this shoe still bends incredibly well. By splitting the clouds down essentially the center of the shoe, you're able to flex the shoe in all sorts of directions. You don't necessarily feel the individual pods, which is fantastic. The flexibility on the Cloud Surfer is a bit less noticeable. I would consider this more of the race type shoe, but because of a couple negatives that I'm going to get to here in a second, I don't necessarily consider this a race shoe. So it's just a little turned off by the rigidity of the Cloud Surfer and preferred the flexibility of the Cloud Flyer. All right, that being said, there are a number of dislikes. Weight. These are heavy shoes there's no doubt about it 11 ounces in my size in the cloud flyer and almost 12 ounces in the cloud surfer they're heavy shoes and that is a byproduct of the tech that helped bring these to life the clouds they're just heavy whether they're using the zero gravity foam to create these pods or outsole rubber it just adds to the weight i will say that one of the major differences between these shoes actually helps me choose one over the other in the cloud surfer the lack of any real heel clouds on any sort of hill descent you notice the lack of any support back here in the heel whereas the cloud flyer with clouds throughout the last you get a nice roll through up into the forefoot laces these shoes have skinny laces and i'm talking probably some of the skinniest that i've reviewed on any shoe huge pet peeve of mine can barely tie the knots once you get the knots tightened they're almost impossible to get untied such a bummer to have such skinny laces on these shoes. And finally, a major dislike because of the clouds, because of the outsole seams, these shoes are like vacuums in picking up rocks. Do not run on gravel, do not run on any surface that has loose items or debris because they will pick it up. Happened in the first run, happened in today's run. There's even a rock in this cloud right here. 
and there's no way in hell I'm getting it out. It's jammed. Kind of defeats the purpose of the clouds when you have rocks stuck in it. So that's it for likes and dislikes about the Cloud Surf and the Cloud Flyer. The likes and dislikes are very similar for both these shoes, so I grouped them into the same review. That being said, On Shoes has a huge cult following, and I know many of you have run in these shoes and claim they're the best you've ever run in. So in the comments of this video, that is where I'm going to leave you guys to your opinion. Let me know. What do you like about On Running Shoes? What do you dislike? Have you tried them before? Let us know in the comments. Let's have that discussion. And of course, if you want to find out any more about these shoes, the technology underfoot, or any of that good stuff, of course, I have links in the description, including a coupon code where you can get some discounts on varying items over at Running Warehouse. But before I let you go, I got to get on with the points. Quality. Swiss engineering right here. How do I know? They have it written all over the shoes. Good quality. These shoes are going to last you a long time, no matter which pair you get. But because of things like thin laces, heavier materials, I'm going to dock them a point. Four out of five on quality. Comfort. My choice of these two shoes, Cloud Flyer. I'm going to choose this shoe over the Cloud Surfer any day because it's lighter and it just is a better fit for my foot and just felt better throughout the foot strike. I felt like I could really push fast in the shoe. And that being said, these aren't necessarily the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. You really have to get used to that responsiveness and be looking for that. I'm going to give them three out of five on comfort. Price, they're expensive. 150 bucks for the Cloud Surfer, 160 bucks for the Cloud Flyer. I think that's a lot of money to be spending on shoes with technology that may work for some and may not work for others. I'm going to give them two out of five. And finally, looks. I'm really torn on looks. I do like bright colors, but everything else about them, I'm not really keen on. I'm going to give them three out of five on looks. That brings our grand total to 12 out of 20. An interesting score for an interesting shoe. I'm excited to see what else they come out with, especially stuff along this line. I will most likely review future models, so stay tuned for more reviews on those. But again, go to the comments, guys, if you want to find out more opinions from other users of the shoes and hopefully polite discussions amongst runners. And that wraps up today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel, YouTube.com com slash the ginger runner and of course on all social networks over on twitter it's at the ginger runner on facebook facebook.com slash the ginger runner over on instagram it's at ethan newberry and of course gingerrunner.com every single monday doing live shows right here on the youtube channel at 6 p.m pacific standard time and of course if you want to help keep the lights on and the mics hot go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a buck a month you can have some really cool perks on the back end that's it i hope you're getting out there training hard racing harder and parting the hardest i know i am we'll see you guys next week for more ginger runner fun <laughs> Bye!